Hey everybody, this video is going to be the start of our Excel for Data Science series. So what we're going to cover in this series is a kind of basics of using Excel to calculate statistics and how you might start thinking about um, doing data science or stats uh, with Excel as a gateway into other programs. So one of the main things that um, I'm working on this summer is building uh, kind of how-to series for JASP. JASP is a statistics program that is free and is meant as an alternative for SPSS, which is not free. Uh, it's also an alternative to R if you aren't really good at coding. But one thing it works on is Excel in the background. So I thought we could do a series on how to work with Excel doing basic stats and then that will help you understand kind of what's going on in other statistical programs because a lot of them um, are data that's ported from Excel. And so uh, you can do some simple stuff like correlation and regression with Excel, um, but a lot of graphing is still powered by Excel. And so we're gonna cover kind of the, the run of those sorts of things in this series. And let's start with thinking about how to enter data. And so it's, it's uh, one thing to think about is what's called tidy data. And so this is a more popular term now, um, especially with R's packages uh, called the tidyverse. And so we want data that is tidy, it's cleaned up. And the kind of rules for that is that each column represents a variable and each row represents a participant. So you'll see uh, sometimes people call this wide format meaning that every single column is a variable and every row is a participant. You can also have what's called long format data where participants are several rows and each row represents a variable. And that's useful for some types of analyses like multi-level models, but we're mostly gonna work with um, tidy data where each person gets their own row. So the way I've described this on my channel before is to think about each person as their own unique individual and so they get their own unique row. Okay. The other thing that I'm gonna suggest is that you use variable labels and not numbers, mostly. So one thing that happens in SPSS is that you can give things uh, numbers and then put a label on top of them. And that's gonna be really good for data that's maybe a Likert scale, so that's sort of one to seven, agree to disagree kind of thing, um, but in general, if the variable is a, a label, you should leave it as a label. So I can have gender be male and female. And that'll help you when you move into JASP. Um, and SPSS maybe not so helpful, but there are ways to recode that. And um, the real reason I suggest that is just memory purposes. So if you're writing a research project, you're not gonna remember later who one and two is unless you leave yourself a note. Um, so it's better to probably have those labels in there, which we can recode as numbers later than trying to remember what the heck the numbers were, um, maybe a year later. So let's start there and let's think about that. Um, so also gonna kind of give you a basic guide on some filling in data tips here. And so we want us to use the first row really as our variable name. So let's start with some sort of participant ID. Okay. And you can use spaces. So when you maybe, um, import this data into another program, a lot of those spaces will get stripped because they don't like spaces. But for most of Excel purposes, the spaces are fine. If you don't like spaces, dots or underscores are really popular. For, let's say you import something into R from Excel, it'll uh, read spaces as dots. Um, and I don't remember what the other programs do, but spaces are gonna be okay for our purposes. If you have a column that's kind of squished like this, you can always double click on it. So not double click on the column like this. Wait till your cursor changes to the, up, uh, the plus arrow here and then double click on it. And that will expand your column to the width of that cell, which is really good for short cells. If you have like maybe text writing responses, it gets crazy. So that's like a quick Excel um, tip there. So let's say we want to record participants gender and then, um, Let's give them some sort of score. Okay. So I'm gonna uh, come up with a participant ID. I'm just gonna label one, two, three, four. And for gender, I'm just gonna make up some numbers here. Now, if I have more participants, 
Yeah, let's say we have 10 participants, um, or you say, you say you have thousands of participants and you wanna do an ID number, one thing you can do is start a series here. So one, two, three, four. Highlight them all and you'll see this little, on my computer it's green, it depends on um, coloring I think, but there's this little square box right here. And that little square box is part of their like series fill. Uh, and so you have to wait till the cursor changes from a white plus to a black plus. And now I can double click on this and it will fill in what it assumes I want, which is a series of numbers counting up from one to nine. But if that isn't what I wanted, I can pick autofill options here and down, click the down arrow. So I could just copy the cells. Um, so it would just copy one, two, three, four over and over again. Um, and then a couple of other options. But the big two you want are either copy cells or fill series. And in this case, we want fill series. So it's a quick way to get a participant number. And we'll make up some scores here. Whoops. And so this would be what we would consider tidy data. Each column is a variable. So I have gender as a, as a variable, they're either male or female. And then I have their score on whatever this uh, example is we're working on. Um, that would be considered tidy because there are two variables, the, the gender of the participant and their score. Now, it is very tempting to instead do this. So when I work, I teach student statistics um, and we get to this section where we're doing, let's say, independent T. Um, what students want to do is instead this. Because it does make sense to have each group be its own column. Okay. Now, there are lots of times when this is okay, um, especially given that Excel kind of lets you get away with this. I'm not going to recommend this, though, and we're going to stick with doing tidy data because as you get more skills, um, and maybe you say you wanna switch from Excel to JASP or SPSS or R or any one of these other pro, um, statistical programs, um, even Python, what you're gonna learn is that this format of data where each group gets their own column is gonna be very problematic because there will be an assumption that each row represents one person. And so, um, a lot of data science is structured on the idea of tidy data. So we're gonna go this way and not do this sort of thing. Um, simply because uh, while it looks intuitively appealing, many of the ways that functions work and run assume that tidy data is happening in the background. Okay. Plus now I have, I can calculate statistics on each variable separately. Whereas before I couldn't, I would have a little bit more trouble with this. So well, we're going to stick with that, that idea, and then if we wanted to add more variables, we could say, uh, let's say, subtotal. This should be more descriptive, depending on your study. And we could keep adding columns if you measured them on multiple scales. Um, the other thing that we're gonna do is use this data analysis add-in because it really helps um, make a lot of this easier. And so I already have it installed here under data, but if you are needing to install it for yourself and you're on a Mac, because that's what I'm on, you have to have the 2016 version of Excel for this to work. There are ways to do this in formula format, but um, if you can get the 2016 version of Excel, this will make your life a little easier. You would click on um, Tools, Excel Add-ins, and then you would click these two. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think if they aren't there, you can hit Browse. Uh, browse only allows you to do ones that maybe have been downloaded, but these two should be there for you. Okay. If you're on a Windows machine, it's a very similar procedure. Uh, and I would tell you to Google how to do it for your version of Excel, because you only need version 2007 plus. But in general, um, what you do is go to File, Options, and then Add-ins. Okay. Um, but I just Googled how to Windows Excel <laughs> data analysis add-in. So very short video today, but that's gonna be um, one other thing we're gonna do this summer is do Excel for data science and thinking about how do I use Excel's functions is gonna be the next video. And then how do I calculate stats 
and then graphs in Excel.